Hello and welcome to my video today. I'm going to be doing a video on Scan My Tesla. I haven't done a look at this app in quite a while, so I'm curious to see if there's any changes in it. So let's get started. First of all, I have the filters set for performance. And this has a number of things showing battery voltage, battery power. We have uh, rear power, rear torque, consumption, stator temp. We have a cell temp and we have speed. And let's see if I can change any of these things on here. Yeah, you can just go through and you can change the columns. You can change the display. That's pretty standard. So you can set different uh, how you want to view the data. And let's go to another section here. Uh, let's go to uh, speed. And we got our speed information. We have temperatures. Whole lot of temperatures here. We have HVAC. We have battery, and battery should have a whole lot of information on it. BMS uh, is gonna have all the different cell groups for the battery pack, so there is a bunch on there. I'm not gonna show all those. Well, totals uh, shows this information here. We have uh, totals for the kilowatt hours used. We have total for DC charge, AC charging, how much was from regeneration. So these are very handy to have. Total energy, regen percent, distance, average consumption, and stationary use. So very useful information on the totals page. Lights, and we have a whole bunch of information about the lights. And then all. And all pretty much is everything that you can just scroll through. And if you hit done, that just takes away your options of uh, choosing different uh, screens. Let's pick the menu on the top left here and go into settings. Um, I want to make sure that this is uh, correct. Uh, the common settings here for the setting uh, page, settings page is Bluetooth. Uh, we have Model 3, Y, and so on on this side. Classic S and X on the right side, so that's correct. Um, show front motor or hide front motor. We don't need to show front motor because this is a rear wheel drive car. And then we have uh, before firmware updates. So it's after that, after that. Oh, uh, let's change it to miles on here and Fahrenheit and foot pounds since I'm used to using the Imperial numbers. And there we go. That's pretty much it for settings. Let's see. Yep. Yeah. So that's all I see there. Let's go in to see if there's anything else in here about scan my Tesla. Yeah, it just gives you a little rundown of the adapter and the Bluetooth, um, device that you would be using that connects to the obd2 port and that happens to be the one i'm using the mx plus which i think is a, a very high quality device and then down here on the menu it shows you some places where you can purchase those uh signal list and dash oh dashboards Let's see if we got any new dashboards on here so this one is showing if you rotate this sideways it's how you would do it if you had, for example, had this phone up on your dashboard. It makes it like a little bit of a HUD display. And then you can actually switch the different types of screens that you can display. And for example, this one shows the kilowatts. We got temperatures and we also got uh, speed on here. What else we got? Then we got another one that's just a single analog dial. 
Then we have some pages with uh, temperatures. Uh, some more information on range and capacity. And so on. So, so you can play around with those and pick which ones you like to have as like your dashboard view. Let's see, is there anything? Oh yeah, so you can switch between the different um, gauges, so to speak. So you could have, say, your voltage on this side, miles on the other side. So it's pretty flexible. It's pretty interesting look to it. All right, what else we got on here? So that's the dashboards. And what else? Uh, let me bring the dashboards back again. And the setting filters. Um, all right, so that's pretty much it. One thing some people asked about was if there's any information on battery degradation. So looking through all of the let me go to battery information let me go to bm uh let's see let's go to battery and let's see if there's anything on here that has to do with degradation we got nominal full pack kilowatt hours Full pack when new, which if I remember correctly, was a um, standard number that uh, they use in this app, which is 77.8 kilowatt hours. So it may not be the actual full pack when new when you purchased the vehicle. So looking through here, I don't see anything that talks about degradation. But you do have some information, for example, full ideal range is for my car, 286 miles, which is not bad since my car is six and a half years old and is pushing 72,000 miles. And that's not too bad. Uh, that's pretty much, I would consider the uh, total range that the car had was 310 miles when I purchased it. And... 286 is, I think it's around 6% degradation in somewhere around there. But otherwise, the Scan My Tesla app provides a lot of interesting information. If you like to track this sort of thing, it is really handy. For example, if you want to know how much kilowatt hours you use for AC charging and DC charging separately, it keeps track of that, which is a, a pretty neat feature. I don't know many other apps that provide that for you. And then, uh, yeah, so uh, that's the basic rundown on the Scan My Tesla app. Don't really see much changes since the last time I used it. It's been a couple years since I've looked at it. So I was just curious to see if anything has changed. And it, it seems about the same as it used to be. I think they did take out the degradation value since... I don't know if it was calculated correctly or there were some issues of it not using the right information or some people thinking that it wasn't accurate. And so I think they just removed it to eliminate any issues that people had with that. So, but if you do want to calculate your own degradation, you could calculate that. You could use the current kilowatt hour rating for the battery pack and then compare that to what it was in the original and do, do some simple arithmetic and you can figure that out. So that's about it. And if you have any questions or comments, please let me know down in the comment section below. I'll have links for this item as well as the OBD2 port adapter, as well as the OBD2 port Bluetooth adapter that this needs to get that information from the car. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.